Hello everybody, welcome back to Journey Beyond the Abyss. So, life circumstances have meant that I don't have a lot of time to sit down for really long recording sessions lately, and I don't feel like doing a stream if I can't make a proper night of it, you know? So, we're probably going to have a couple of weeks of shorter episodes, and it might disrupt the schedule of Syrup Leaf if I run out of recorded material before I can continue. But, in the meantime, we will make do. So... To get farther into the Abyss, we are going to need to make Red Alloy and Electrochine Alloy Ingots. Both of these are pretty similar recipes. We're going to need four Thermionic Fabricators in total, one of them making the Compound, one of them simply making the Electrochine Alloy. Yes. So, and it's the same for Red Alloy. So, first step is we're going to need to get ourselves four of those thermionic fabricators. Let's just take a couple of the casings out of the old storage and let it build up replacements for us. Yes, yeah, so let's maybe... Well, it's already replaced a ton of them because it has more in storage. So, let's just keep that in storage and we'll use those up for a little while. So, we're going to need four of these in total. And in order to turn those into thermionics... We are going to need a bunch of tin, a bit of glass, some chests, some gold, and we're going to need 16 heavy engineering blocks in total. Well, that's also nice and easy for us. How's the piston supply doing? Uh, you know, it's probably about time that I properly at least made a semi-automation for the wood going into here. You know what? Let's do that real quick. Let us do that. So, we've come across a problem where I don't really have any slots left that would not have interference from fellow hoppers going in. But, in my test world, I have figured out a solution. What I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need... Well, first of all, I need to figure out... I guess that this side would be the best option. Yeah. So, I'm going to need to make an immersive engineering item router. This thingy right here. It's relatively simple. It's more or less it's more or less the blocks of steel that are the only really expensive part of it and the treated wood, I guess. <laughs> you know, to me the treated wood might be more expensive than the steel. So, let's get on making some of that. Do I have any Ah, good. So let's just make some of this. Oof. And put all that in there. And then, so that I've got 8, 16, 24. I'm also going to need some more ash. Did I make myself any more ash in the recent past? It looks like that answer to that is no. Do I have any peat to turn into additional ash? That is also looking like no. Ah yes, I finally tried out the various means of farming peat. Since that looks like the easiest method of automating... Uh, no, no, that's not peat. And um, yeah, it's possible, but it's very, very slow. Uh, the peat bog, the multi-block farm, all of them don't operate very quickly at all. Huh, I've got some. Okay. So, remind me, what is the recipe here? It's just ash and peat with water. Okay, cool. And that's five at a time. So... You know what? I, let's just... There. Cool. So... Five... Ten... And yeah, I mean... It is potentially automatable. Um, and building a peat bog, I would want the managed version of it. So we would first need to make the manual version, and that would require this flexible casing. And that wouldn't be too terribly hard. But then in order to get the managed version, uh, well, we, it would be relatively easy right now because we have the Super Diamonds. So yes, I could make this peat bog, but again, it is an incredibly slow machine. 
So now I can 5, 10, 15, 20. As in, like, I left the game idle for about four hours and still did not have a stack of peat. And I think it would actually be producing slower than the rate that I am demanding ashes at this point of time. Simply because we have a lot of machines that require that require treated wood that keep on popping up. Hmm, I've got a lot of these log piles in storage. All right, now we got 20 more to go through, cool. And the conversion rate is pretty good, it's not bad. So yes, ash is potentially fully automatable with peat. And uh, to make the peat, you would need to make uh, bog earth, which is relatively easy to automate as well. Basically what a peat bog does is it takes RF bog earth and, and um, yeah, and you can see that the bog earth is just dirt, sand, and mulch. And mulch we can get through this moistener process, which is essentially turning leaves and cobblestone, I guess, into mulch. It would be a bit of a production chain, but nothing onerous. It would just be so slow that I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's worth it. It would require multiple peat bogs, and each of them has an enormous footprint. So, we're just going to have to, let's see, we've got, let's see here. All right, it's one bucket per eight here. I keep on forgetting the ratios. It's been a little while since I played because I was trying to hold off until I could stream, and unfortunately, that didn't work out. Five, six, seven, eight. Ah, let's just make all of it. It's always useful having a supply of treated wood on hand. So let's just put this away in here, I guess. And let's keep one stack on us. So we're making that router. And I should have put that on my memorized list. So then we're gonna need a single conveyor belt, a single machine piece, four blocks of steel, some iron, little bits and bobs all over the place. And let's just go grab a stack of iron. There we go. And I probably also should have grabbed the redstone while I was out there, but eh. Having more iron sitting in my little intermediaries box is always useful. Let's see, it would require these, right? Yeah, for those four blocks of steel. Do I have any blocks of steel in my storage here? I do. Is that everything? No, I'm missing a mechanical component. Uh, was it steel or iron? There we go. So, what the router will do is it will do pretty much what it says, it'll route items. And more importantly, it will allow us to set filters and it is interactive with hoppers as well as the mechanical artisan. So if I put the mechanical router right, let's say, Shmar, then I can say that I only want, well, let, let's go get a sample of what we're gonna be programming it with, which will be jungle wood planks. Let's just get a couple of them just to demonstrate. So I say jungle wood planks go to the south side. And now that it's programmed with a filter, 
it will only allow items to go out the south side and it will only allow jungle wood planks. If I push anything else into there, then it simply won't work. So, if I put the hipper down here, then you see if I put planks in, they disappear. And they aren't disappearing down here. If I temporarily cut the connection to my uh, cobble stock over here and remove the, oh, well, that's gonna cause me problems, but, oh, it is? Shoot, okay. Okay, okay, what did I do in my test? I think that I have to filter that to cobblestone, don't I? And let's take this off before it gets into my, before it causes problems. There, now, now that that side is properly filtered, it shouldn't be able to steal from the item router. So if I take out these jungle wood planks again, temporarily block the funnel, and then dupe and dupe. Yes, now, oh. Yeah, see, they don't appear into there. It would probably be more useful if I had like a full stack to shove in there. Let's go and make that real quick. I can probably just trash these. But yes, now that it has filtered outputs on the bottom, it shouldn't allow that hopper to steal from the item router. Unless I put cobblestone into the item router, that is. It should only allow wood to go out the south side. And nothing but cobble on the bottom. So if I cut down some trees, get myself a nice bunch of logs. That I can convert into planks real quick. Good. And let's just free ourselves of our burden here. And make sure that we don't carry around any jungle pods because we have experiences with those and untimely deaths. So if I just take those, and I should have some spare pulp in here to show you the recipe I'm gonna be using for this full automation. So I can take these jungle wood planks here and we'll just clear all this out. So the recipe I'm gonna be going for is this plus this. And yeah, that, that should show you over in here that this will result in four jungle wood planks per craft. And if I just do that, then we'll see, there we go. So four buckets should give me a stack of wood. Relatively quickly. Nope, I miscalculated. But that's okay. That is why we have more wood than we need. Just for miscalculations like that. I must have accidentally put in five buckets instead of four. Now, if I come over here and I once again block the pipe, empty the hopper, and now shove a stack in here, then we should see that this hopper never has any wood in it. And furthermore, that this is only draining one at a time because it is not getting stolen from by the hopper beneath it. And that is how we can extend the usable insertable sides available to us on this mechanical artisan and potentially make every single face of all the mechanical artisan uh, input tubes usable. So 
Now all we need to do is we need to make a quick automation of this recipe here. Now, it is going to also require a second carpenter. One to make wood pulp, one to make the wood planks themselves. So we're just going to need a ton of bronze, some redstone, some pistons. So we're going to need eight heavy, four, eight pistons, four redstone. So eight of these, four of these. I don't have any pistons in storage unless, uh-huh. And a bunch of bronze, which I don't seem to have on me. Goodness, it's broad daylight. How do I have hypothermia? It's not raining. What is going on? Ugh, the weather keeps on getting worse and worse and worse, I swear. Well, let us just go and grab... Do I have any bronze in here? I do. Cool. And that should allow me to make two carpenters. Oh, wait. Missing glass. Cool. Need four glass. And that'll get us two carpenters. Excellent. Now, I'm also going to need an chest. And eventually, this chest will be a split point off the main bus. This, uh... This space we have in the wall of silos is going to eventually be filled by logs when we have a means of automating wood on hand. So we're going to say that the chest will come out. Eh, I guess here would be the most convenient. Yeah, that's not touching any other machines. So that is going to need, say, a carpenter, hmm, it's going to need to go at a one to four ratio between the two carpenters because a single piece of log should make four wood pulp, right? And if I go into here, yeah, four wood pulp and it'll use one each for the log recipe. So it'll need to send one to the pulper and one to the logger and four to the logger. So let's make, let's see here. Let's put a, hmm. Let us put some plugs like right here. So this'll be the pulper. And I'll just directly insert down into this fellow. So then we'll have two extraction pipes, one down here, appropriately positioned, one up here with a block on there, going up, onto, I need to pick up some more transport pipe. There, okay. And then we should be able to make our standard pattern. Oh, I need more pulsers. Hmm. Oh, well, I don't need more pulsers yet. I can at least make this machine, but I definitely need to restock my essentials. So we're going to need a gold pipe, and I think an ant should work. And we're also going to need an ore gate. And I'm going to need some more gold transport pipe. Just right on over here. Oof. Do I have any emergency tinder on me? I do. Well, also, let's top up my thirst real quick. It feels a little bit weird not having chat to talk to. Kind of now floundering to fill the conversational void. <sighs> It'll just be a couple of weeks. It's just some personal stuff 
that is, uh, I've, I've got, essentially we've got a family friend crashing on the couch. And I can't you do my usual times to film because I would wake I would wake him up. So I've just got to I, I have little I have chances here and there, but not very many. They're kind of precious right now. All right. So we're also going to need way more gates than this. And we'll do, I suppose. So we're going to need gate down there to control the overall amounts. So you are going to say... No, wait. We don't want it on there. We want it to be the final output leading into the... Leading into the... Um, the final destination. Yes. So, extractor on here, plugged, and wrenched into the appropriate configuration. You are just going to be always on, I think? No, you are going to need to be gate controlled. Though thankfully, thankfully, you can pretty much just immediately go over there. And you're also going to need a third, my third and final pulsar for the moment. Write down Shemar. Why won't you get on there? Oh, because you're the wrong pipe. Derp. All right. So you are going to say, while inventory on east side, let's see here. Which way is that? That is west. While well, inventory on west side contains less than 50%, pulse the pipe. And while item traversing, emit blue signal. Then I can take my structural pipe and unfortunately I need to move the gate onto another side, don't I? Yeah, I should have realized that. Alright, so I can move that gate onto the top side to allow me to cross it over. And we'll just have to say the same thing. Uh, contains less than 50% on the west side. Pulse the pipe, and item traversing blue pipe signal, and get back down to the tinder and turn it daytime so I don't die. Goodness, it is getting so cold in this world. I wish I could wear properly insulated clothing. What I really wish was if Tough as Nails would have an enchantment or something that would make any piece of armor insulated. That would be ideal. Not that I have the capability to make enchanted clothing just now. But it would be... Well, I suppose that by the time I can make enchanted clothing, I'll have access to the... Uh, to the thermal expansion equipment that'll negate the... the mechanic in general. All right, so run this on down. And you are going to say... Did I not put a... Okay. So you are going up into the logging machine, right? So you need to be our gold gate. Hmm, and unfortunately... Yeah, unfortunately, I don't want to run the blue signal down to this one, in fact. I want to run it down to the one that'll go to the pulping machine, not the logging machine. Hmm. Well, I guess I can run that over here and on here. Yeah, that'll work. Y 
you aren't fully connected just yet. This place is getting impossible to navigate. Okay. So, and then I can cross it over at last to that gate. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. And you are going to have just a regular old gate on you. Saying that upon receiving blue signal, you will pulse the pipe once. And upon item traversing, you will emit white signal. Which means I unfortunately need to clean up the pipe a little bit. Because my messy placement is doing me no favors here. You know, I'm just gonna cut this connection for the time being just so I can get in there more more better. Cool. So let's run the blue up this side. And the white up this side, cool. You can tell I've taken a break for a few days and I've kind of lost my pace. Lost, lost a little bit of, uh, of my, of my concentration. Okay, cool. And you then are gonna have a gate on here saying, on receival of white signal, and this is an AND gate, so it has to be on all four. Pulse the pipe four times. There we go. Now, all I need to do is run water up one side and power up the other. It might actually be a little bit difficult with how spaghettified this place is getting. So, let's see here. I can... I can probably, it would probably be best to do water on this side, even with the lava pipe right there. Because we can plug that off to keep it safe. And then there should be a space like under here somewhere that I can run it. There might even be a pipe of water already pre-built for me somewhere. No, this area is reaching maximum load. Hmm, it's gonna be tricky. Tricky, tricky, dicky. Let's see here. First of all, let's take a look down here and see if I have a prefab pipe of water anywhere nearby. There's another piece of pollution coming out of here. Why isn't it all coming up to the filter? Hmm. Do I need to put redstone engines on these things because they seem to extract faster and smoother? Because I can't double layer these. More importantly, does this mean that some of my other smelteries are occasionally emitting pollution? I don't think they are. Because I haven't seen anything piling up in the skies above my other smelters. Just these guys. So what's the major malfunction here? Worrying. Very worrying. Oh well. Let us get up there and create us a pump. Because I apparently do not have one available at the moment. So we're just going to need some fluid pipes, we're going to need some mechanical components, and I think that might be it. Maybe iron? I forget what goes into a pump. E-U-M-P. Spills poop. Ah. Well, we had it available. So. 
and you. And we're also going to need a block of redstone. And let us find a place to navigate through the spaghetti over here. So, what would be best? It would probably be best if I work backwards from the source of the problem. So, first step is going to be... Oh, right. Okay, so I can't be on that side, can it? At least not easily. Hmm. Yeah, I might have built this machine a wee bit too close for comfort. But let us work on our spaghetti navigation skills and see if we can't finagle this. So, you need to plug this up. And that's a prime place to start branching off here. Excellent. And now, I can finagle it over here. And that'll get us down to a clear space. Cool. So now I just need to poke this on over and down. And from here, I can just a boop and no, not there, actually, because that pipe is going to prevent me from giving it power. So, here. Yes, that'll work. A boop. Then I need Hamar, which is an other bag. Need Hamar to give it output, give it connection, and give it redstone. And now I just need to give it power. So, need to get out my connectors. Probably my relays. Oops. Then on to you. And where is my closest power? Eh, it's kind of nowhere close. But I guess I can kind of finagle it. Can I reach it, like, if I do this? Yeah, that's a bit ugly, but what you gonna do? This is thankfully the last device we need to, ha to add to the mechanical artisan, so this is the maximum complexity of the device that we're playing with right here. There we go. And you see that immediately produces water. And just like that, we should see our two friends upstairs immediately beginning to fill up. Water and water. Excellent. Okay. Ah, uh, right, right, right. Oh. Yeah, that, that's actually not the, that's not the, um, yeah, I want it to be, yeah, and I want this to be, um, instead of single pulse, I want it to be power pulser, and this emit white, cool. Ah, yes, and before I forget, I should also make sure to fill up this thing with all my logs, this chest here. 
as well as program the two machines recipes. So this one up here is going to be our pulper and it's just a single thing in the center. And uh, let's in fact, oh well, it'll, it'll sort that out once we give it power. So the power now has to be on this side because of it's just the last face available to the machine. And I guess, yeah, I guess that I can just kind of, um, if there is power available over on this space here, if there's space available, I should say, which there probably isn't. I mean, there's technically, okay, cool. So let's just poke a hole through there. And then I can kind of uh, worm my way over. Let's see. What's the best place? It probably can't reach there through the item pipe, can it? No. But I can reroute it. That pipe, I mean. Just do this. And then make sure that the pipe is reconnected, the pipe wire. And then I can route there. And there. Excellent. All right, so now we have a power nipple up on top. And from there, I can put a relay right on top of it. Ugly as sin, effective as hell. And there it has power. Question mark, it has power? Oh, it doesn't have... Okay, cool. So, just put two of them in there. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. That needs to be the... Shoot, 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 shoot. No, 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 no. Nope. I built this completely the wrong way around. Right, okay, so. That isn't the item output. This is where the, it the item output should be cool. Okay, okay. Well, this is why we test our builds as we go, because my brain can be full of derp. All right, so, 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 so. Uh, let's see here. So that's our input into the logging machine. And this is where we're going to need to have our gold gate. That also means that I don't need this swirling all the way down to the bottom. My first instinct was right. I shouldn't have doubted it. It was just going to have to go up to this machine. Right. So how am I going to output out of this thing? It's going to have to be like... There. Up to there. Just keep my plugs on my bar. There. Okay, so then this is going to need gate. It's going to need pipe wire. And you're going to say when container on south side is less than 50% full, emit blue. All the way down to there. Why is that side plugged? 
you are then going to say, wait, yeah, that size plug because you are the output from this thing, dir. You are then going to say, while blue signal, pulse pipe. And furthermore, you are gonna be filtered to only accept planks. And we are going to say that your recipe is planks. All right, so that's the output sorted. Going on into that. So, and right, this is going into here. So you are going to have to say on white signal, pulse the pipe four times. I think that's what I had you programmed to before. Was I correct and I just got mixed up which machine did which? And you are gonna need to be an input, I guess, on this side. And you are gonna to have to go up to this machine over here. Yeah, now this is making a bit more sense as it gets more and more mind-bogglingly complex. Okay, so the blue wire comes in over here if it can. Hmm, pipe plug is preventing crossover from happening. Hmm. How to resolve that. I don't know if I can resolve that. All right. We're just gonna have to make this even jankier. There we go, with a structural pipe. Right there. Crossing all the way over and down. And you are going to say while blue signal, pulse pipe, and this will be going up to the pulping machine, correct? Cool. We're also going to have... No, this is gonna to need to be a bit more complex of a gate, isn't it? Because I don't want it overloading that machine up there. I don't want it overloading the final output. And I only want it... Okay, so I might need my third color of wire on here. And this is probably gonna to have to be a gold gate. So in the meantime, let's put white pipe wire on here. So you're gonna say while blue and white, pulse the pipe. No wait, I think I should be able, yeah, I should be able to do this with just a white gate because it only needs to be those two, I think. Okay, so blue and white. Pulse the pipe. And then I just, down here, I'm gonna need my third color of wire. Because we're just gonna have a gate on, where would be the most convenient place? Hmm. A gate right here, I suppose. No, I, I don't really have a convenient place I can cross over on there, do I? Not unless I move this to the 
top side, I don't think. Yeah. No, wait, then it wouldn't be able to... So I guess I need the gate on the underside of this, don't I? Because what I need to do is I'm going to need to... This is going to be the sensor saying when item pass through to create the pulsar for the output on this thing. And that's going to need to come over here, then down, then across into this one. So... First of all, let's get our third color of wire so I can start... Uh, mapping that out. So you cross over there and you are going to say when item traversing, create black signal. And you should be able to cross down to here. If it'll let me. But unfortunately you won't be able to go across because we have pulsers and gates in the way. So we need to rearrange this. And yes, we have in fact reached maximum spaghetti. Always a good, good sign that you're building comprehensive devices. Hmm. Ah, there we are. And I can just get on down here. Gate on bottom side. And I can say when blue and white pulse pipe. And now I can put a structural pipe right here to allow me to cross over onto there, and you can then say on black signal, single pulse four times. Cool. So now all I need, uh oh, what's happening? Where did I break the signal? Where did I? Okay, you have blue signal going all the way down. Oops. On south side. Oh, that's the problem. Cool. Wait. Redstone? Did I accidentally put the pulp into the wrong one? Or was that just an unfortunate case of like and eh, regardless regardless it's fixed now all right so where was i where was i right i need a gate up there with white pipe wire saying when inventory on south side is 25 percent full or while it's less than you you know what i mean and I'm just going to get three stacks of cobblestone so it's very nearly at 25% full at all times. Load this fellow up. There we go. And we should see that white signal is still on, but it should shut off after it has like 20 or 30 pieces of wood in it. And then we can just run it on down. And this should finally kick the system on. So, we're getting logs coming out here, and that's creating the pulsar over here to drop wood out. Oh, wrong pulse. Wrong pulsar. There we go. So now we have logs going in here, as well as wood pulp coming in, and that's constantly withdrawing the jungle wood planks until... this hopper is full. 
or 50% full, I should say. And that is working its way nice and easily on down into the mechanical artisan. So now when I want to reload the wood in this thing, I just need to get it into this chest here. And eventually when I have wood fully automated, I just need to pipe it into this chest here and we will have fully automated the entire process of all the mechanical artisan bits and bobs. Oh boy, it's happening again. Why? Shoot. Okay. Top side, redstone only. Stop accepting logs. So that's one thing you need to be careful of with your item router is you need to program all the sides whether you think you need to do or not because otherwise it outputs blindly. And in fact, I can probably say uh, filter or dictionary MBT data. No, it doesn't have like a whitelist or blacklist mode, but you just need to make sure that you filter all the sides that are actually touching something. So any other size is just bottom, top and north, I guess. Right, but it doesn't matter if it's inputting back into this thing, but we will uh, let's see. Yeah, that that's north face. So north face, we will just um, we'll put something anomalous in there just so it doesn't eject back into its own input. And there, that should we should be seeing the mechanical artisan fill up with wood. And if I take it out, it starts filling up again. Cool. All right, and that's as simple as that. Yes, as simple as this incredible mess of spaghetti. And unfortunately, I'm probably gonna to need to clear out these machines and reboot it just because it screwed up the ratio while I was uh, futzing around, not remembering that I need to reset the pulse or command on this thing. But just as we have reached maximum spaghetti, we have finished the automation on here. And as I said, I don't have much time to film tonight because I'd rather not wake up our guest. So unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to call it here for the night. Why is that not? Why is you not? Okay, you. You are missing something. You should be receiving copper, right? I'm sure as hell not out of copper. Is it just not being input fast enough into the chest? No, that's not it. Looks like the input got broken somewhere along the way. So where is the problem? Fish must have died to electricity. Hello. Is this a broken pipe? Ah, looks like this might be our issue. Just kind of a dupe. and then reconnect it. There. And that should begin summoning more copper. 
into this split box. Cool. And that'll begin restocking our systems again. And eventually we should see it begin to uh, repressurize up on here. Yeah, and there we go. Now it's creating gears. Now it's creating mechanical components. And the system is restarting itself. Cool. All right. So, yep. It's not quite fully, fully automated, but it is very, very automated. The only thing we need to do now is occasionally drop a whole bunch of jungle logs into this chest here. And that will eventually filter down into the process of uh, creating all of our mechanical components. Hmm. All right, well, as I said, I don't have a lot of time to record right now. So, I'm going to have to call it a night. But, we will be continuing our journey beyond the abyss in more bite-sized chunks for a week or two. And, unfortunately, Syrup Leaf is probably going to be delayed be by this, because I, uh, I can't record more Let's Read Live... So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's just going to be the channel for a couple of weeks. Sorry about that. As you can tell, I'm possibly a little bit frazzled by it. But such is life, and we shall persevere. In the meantime, everyone, have yourself a beautiful day, have yourself a lovely evening, and I will see you on the next one. Good night, everybody.